In the world of copyright law, one landmark case stands out as a turning point in determining the balance between innovation and protection. This case is Sony Corp. Of America v. Universal City Studios, Inc., 1984, commonly referred to as the Betamax case. It involves Sony's manufacture and sale of the Betamax, a revolutionary video cassette recorder, VCR, that allowed users to record television programs for later viewing. The case brought to the forefront the question of whether such recording technology constituted copyright infringement. The case began in 1976 when Universal City Studios, supported by other major Hollywood film studios, filed a lawsuit against Sony for copyright infringement. They claimed that the sale of the Betamax enabled users to copy and distribute copyrighted content without permission, thus hindering the revenues of the movie industry. Universal sought a court order to ban the sale of Betamax and requested damages. The case eventually reached the Supreme Court, where it was argued whether Sony could be held liable for contributory copyright infringement. In a landmark decision, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of Sony in 1984. In a majority opinion authored by Justice John Paul Stevens, the court held that the sale of the Betamax did not constitute contributory copyright infringement. The court reasoned that the device itself was capable of substantial non-infringing uses, such as time-shifting television programming for personal use. Therefore, Sony could not be held responsible for the actions of its customers who may choose to infringe copyrights using the technology. The ruling established the Betamax Doctrine, which stated that the manufacturer of a technology could not be held liable for copyright infringement if their product had substantial non-infringing uses. This doctrine provided a significant legal precedent for innovation and the development of new technologies. It opened the doors for the emergence of the home video industry and subsequent advancements in recording and playback devices, such as DVDs, Blu-ray discs, and digital streaming services. However, the ruling did not give consumers an unlimited right to copy and distribute copyrighted content. The Supreme Court emphasized that the Betamax decision did not condone piracy or other unauthorized uses of copyrighted material. If a person used technology for substantial infringing purposes, they could still be held liable for copyright infringement. Sony Corp. of America vs. Universal City Studios, Inc., 1984, left a lasting impact on the entertainment industry and copyright law in general. It set a precedent that recognized the importance of balancing innovation with the protection of intellectual property. The ruling sparked debates and discussions that continue to this day regarding the boundaries of fair use, technological advancements, and the rights of content creators in the digital age.